So what's the deal with Capital One 360? In this video, I'm gonna review Capital One's checking and savings account and give you my honest thoughts on both. My name's Kevin, I make personal finance videos like this one all the time and I always give my honest takes. So if you like that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe to the channel and if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a like, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's jump right into it. So I don't know about you, but I knew nothing about Capital One 360 prior to doing research on it, other than they put out really ridiculously cringy commercials trying to appeal to millennials in order to get them to use their services. Apparently you were supposed to go to a coffee shop which was supposed to allow you to talk freely about your finances and get coffee. It was very strange. I never quite understood it and it really kind of put me off to the whole idea of Capital One. With all that being said, the Capital One savings account is actually pretty good and I'll explain why I think that. Whereas a checking account, not my favorite, but if you have a lot of cash and you need to make deposits, it could be a really good account for you. I'll explain a little later. First, I'm going to jump into the Capital One savings account. So right off the bat, it's clear that the Capital One savings account is the better of the two products. The Capital One savings account is free to use and it offers, as of the date of this video, a 1.8% interest rate on its FDIC insured account. This is terrific and this compares among the higher rates of all the sort of banks out there and blows away the competition when you compare it to Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo and City, which offer close to 0% interest. To be fair, there are bank accounts out there that offer a slightly higher interest rate, such as Varro Bank, but this account, the Capital One 360 savings, is among the highest and it's gonna move in tandem with all those other banks depending on what the Federal Reserve does. If the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, you can expect the Capital One savings account to have an interest rate increase as well. And if the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, you can expect the Capital One 360 savings account interest rate to fall. Another great thing about the Capital One savings account is that it's free to use. There are no account maintenance fees whatsoever on this account. This compares with Ally, Robinhood, SoFi, Discover, and all those other online banks which are also similarly free to use. And the brick and mortar banks like Chase and Bank of America often will actually charge you money to have an account, which is ridiculous. You should never do that. Fortunately, the Capital One savings account is free to use. However, it should be noted that the Capital One 360 savings account limits your transfers to six per month, which is in line with traditional savings accounts like Ally or those found at your brick and mortar retailers and has to do with the federal law having to do with money laundering. But I would note that Robinhood and SoFi don't have this restriction at all. If you exceed the six per month, Capital One charges you a fee. Now I'd say the biggest downside to this account is that you cannot access money except for transferring from another bank. What I mean is you can't actually withdraw money from the Capital One savings account via an ATM. You have to connect this account to another account, another checking account, whether it be at Capital One or another bank in order to get money into the savings account. There are a few other key things I like about this account. I like that you could set savings goals for this account. For example, you could set money for your kid's college fund, or you could set money as a goal to save for the holiday shopping season. And you could do automatic transfers by connecting this account with an outside account and making them every two weeks or however often you get paid in order to transfer the money into that account to get your savings automated, which I think is a really good thing to do. The less friction you have in your savings, the better it's going to be for you. The Capital One 360 savings account does offer a mobile check deposit and a clean user interface. Other than that, it's a pretty bare bones account. There's not a whole lot to say about the savings account other than it's free to use. It has a good interest rate and it's FDIC insured. So for those who are looking for a place to put their emergency fund, the Capital One 360 savings account could be a good place for you. It's not an account that you're gonna be doing a lot of transactions out of. It's just a place to put your emergency fund set and forget and know that it's gonna be safe. Now moving on to the Capital One 360 checking account. This is an account that I would not recommend for most people out there because it doesn't have a very high interest rate. It doesn't have a lot of features out there that the newer firms are offering and it charges money for basic services like checks. I'm gonna get into all of this in just one second. I would recommend a firm like Robinhood or even SoFi Money, an account that I love and use every single day as opposed to this account. However, there is one reason why you should get the Capital One checking account. Let me start with the pros of this account. Well, the Capital One checking account, again, is also free to use just like the Capital One savings account, which is great, especially when you compare it to those brick and mortar retailers, which again, charge you an account maintenance fee, something you should never ever pay. I know I repeat myself a lot on this, but it's a really key point and something so simple that people can do to better their financial lives. Secondly, this account is FDIC insured, which is a really great thing because you never wanna have an account that's not FDIC insured in case the bank goes bust. Not that Capital One is probably gonna go bust anytime, but you never know. Another great thing about this account is that it does offer interest on your deposits, 
but it scales depending on how much money you have in the account. It ranges from around 0.2% to around 0.75%, for your balances in there, which is great when you compare it to traditional checking accounts from those brick and mortar retailers, but it doesn't compare very favorably when you look at another firm like Robinhood or SoFi, which combines um, the checking and savings aspects of two accounts and offers you an, an interest rate, which is about double or triple or even quadruple what Capital One is offering. Now the Capital One checking account, again, like I said, doesn't have a lot of the cutting edge features out there and it actually has some of the old relics of a banking industry, which is nickel and diming a lot of their customers out there. One of the examples I will bring up here is the fact that you need to pay money to have checks ordered for Capital One. So if you want to order some checks, you have to pay between seven and $11, you know, which may not seem like a lot of money, but to me it's a big annoyance and I don't like paying those little tiny fees just for something as simple as ordering checks. SoFi Money, for example, has free check ordering. And there's a lot of other firms out there that offer free check ordering. And this is just something that just rubs me the wrong way. I don't like to be nickeled and dimed. And that is exactly what they're doing here. Even if they say the account is free, there are certain aspects of the account which I would think would be included, a checking account providing me checks, which I thought would be free, but clearly is not in this account. Now there is one aspect to the Capital One checking account, which I think is phenomenal and way better than a lot of checking accounts offered on the market today. In fact, it's one of the only checking accounts that I know which offers this service. You can make cash deposits into an ATM around the country for Capital One. Now it's limited, it's very limited, and you could see online, you could go and type in exactly where you wanna make the cash deposits in those ATMs, but it is a service that is offered. All other online banks that I know of, including SoFi and Ally and those other banks out there, don't allow you to make cash deposits directly. Typically, you have to make a cash deposit into a brick and mortar retailer or credit union and transfer the money over. But for Capital One, you can actually make the direct cash deposits into the ATMs themselves. In addition to that, Capital One offers you the network, the all point network and the Capital One network of ATMs across the country, which is tens and thousands of ATMs. Not all of those, in fact, the majority of them aren't gonna be able to accept cash deposits, but you will be able to withdraw for free cash from any of those ATMs, which again is a great, great plus. So for those who get paid in cash or happen to have a lot of cash around or want the ability to make just simple cash deposits, the Capital One checking account actually is going to be a really good account to have. Now the interest rate is something to always keep in mind. You don't want to leave too much money in there because you can get a much higher yield on other FDIC insured accounts, whether it be a checking account or a savings account. You're going to get a much higher yield than the Capital One checking account. But if you need a place to deposit cash and you don't want to have a traditional brick and mortar retailer like Chase or Bank of America to be your in-between, this can be a great account to have. The Capital One checking account also has a few other features which I think are important and some people may get a lot of value out of them. It has fraud uh, protection and the ability to give you notices if you're running low on funds so you don't have overdrafts. They send you texts and updates that way. And they also have a phone number which is very different when you compare the customer experience to a place like Robinhood, which tries to be as bare bones as possible. Capital One does have a service line where you can call somebody for most hours of the day uh, in order to answer any questions you have about your account, which I know is a feature that a lot of people are going to value, especially with a primarily online bank account like Capital One. So my takeaway for the checking account of Capital One is that I would get it if you're somebody who needs to make a lot of cash deposits. If you're not, then I would recommend getting another checking account out there because you're going to get a similarly free account, but you're gonna be able to get the benefits of free checks a lot of times, and certainly a much higher interest rate than you would with a Capital One account out there. I personally like SoFi Money. Robinhood is a great example as well of, of a good account out there. And I'll put in the description below some of my recommendations for you to check out and get familiar with. Be sure to check out my other videos in order to see what I have to say and get my honest takes on those other bank accounts. But overall, the Capital One checking account is not an account that I would recommend. The savings account is a good place to put your emergency fund, but the checking account I'd leave behind. So what do you think of the Capital One 360 savings and checking accounts. So let me know in the comments below. Is this an account that you would recommend or get yourself or do you have the account? Are there things that I'm missing? Please let me know. Or do you know of accounts out there which offer the best benefits of Capital One but also additional benefits as well? Please let me know. I got this idea from a few users who commented and I always really appreciate uh, those comments because they give me great video ideas to do and I really like doing them and researching them. So Please like the video if it helped you out. I'd really, really appreciate it. That's all I ask. 
and subscribe to the channel. I guess I'm asking two things. So with that, I will see you next time. Thanks so much.